Welcome to 2021. This is Valor Media, episode number 48 for January 4th. I'm your host, Mark Appenzeller, and I'm so excited that you're joining me on the very first Valor Media podcast for 2021. 2020 was, well, it just was. We'll kind of let it at that. We come into 2021 with that same excitement that I think most people feel beginning any new year. It's kind of that clean slate idea. It's that fact that you're coming into a year that is untested, unproven. It's kind of the unexplored waters. And it's really an exciting place to be because we all want to have an optimistic view of what we want to accomplish in the coming year. We want to believe that we not only will have a better year than we did previously, and that especially holds true this time around for many of us with all of the complexities that 2020 held, But I think it's the idea, too, that we want to begin a new year motivated by the fact that we experienced things in the previous year that we want to infuse into us. We want it to shape the way we look at things. We want it to modify our attitudes and our behavior. And we hopefully want a lessons learned kind of experience where we can take even some of the negative stuff of the previous year and use it as a foundation to operate differently. That can translate into a wide spectrum of things. Maybe that means that we try something brand new this year that we've never, ever attempted before because we were afraid, we were uncertain, we didn't know where to begin. Or sometimes it can mean that we just go back and throw ourselves back into the routine that we're already in, yet purposing to not simply be in a rut, purposing to really establish that clear idea of Okay, this is what I was doing before, but I'm going to find a better way to do it now. I'm going to find a more efficient way to do it. I'm going to find a more productive way to do it. I'm going to find a way that really in so many aspects will elevate it above just going through the motions. Because if we don't do that, all of that euphoria that kind of swirls around New Year's will fade And probably by the time you're hearing this, at least by January 4th of 2021, maybe some of that initial excitement that, oh, I can't wait to see what happens, has really fallen by the wayside. Maybe you've started another work week, maybe returning after being off for the holidays, and now you find yourself confronted with the reality that there's still daily life. There's still stuff to figure out. You might go to work and realize, oh my gosh, the same problems that I was dealing with two weeks ago are still here. The new year doesn't magically make things change. It's about intentionality. It's about purpose. And that's what I want to share with you today. And I'm titling today's episode, this first installment for 2021, Burn Your Plow. That may seem like kind of a strange title. A little bit later on, I'll explain what that means. I want to actually share a very short scripture with you that I think is very relevant. It's a spiritual precept, a spiritual truth that really has a lot of personal life application, particularly in the idea of what we do in our business. And if you've listened to any podcasts that I've hosted before, you know that the word business for me is really very open-ended. It doesn't specifically have to mean some money-making venture. It can simply be the operation of anything, your household, your marriage, taking care of elderly parents. Whenever you find yourself in life dealing with a certain set of circumstances where you have to devise systems and procedures and figure out sequential steps to do something, that can be business. Or it can very much be in the scope of where you go and spend hours every day, or maybe you sit at home and do it, working for someone else or yourself, doing something that is specifically geared toward the whole idea of business, of commerce, of providing a service or goods of some kind and receiving monetary compensation as you create things. Whatever sphere it falls into, it's still business. It's still doing something to get something done. And what I want to share with you today, I think can help frame everything that you do in whatever your business is for 2021 in a way that will hopefully help you to maybe reach out and either, like I said earlier, try something new that you never tried before, or if you're back just doing the same things you were a month ago, maybe doing it from a fresh perspective. 
I think it's really critical sometimes to get that different vantage point. And if we just keep doing things the same way over and over again, we will wear out, we'll burn out, we'll get discouraged, we'll get despondent. We may see things change, but chances are pretty good that we're just in a rut. And I wanted to talk just for a second about that whole idea of ruts. Now, we haven't had bad winters for the most part in the last several years where I live in Western Maryland, but we certainly used to have terrible winters, and we actually had a fairly large snow about two weeks ago. I don't know. We've had some freezing rain and ice and and just a lot of rain lately. I don't know what the winter that's ahead holds. Maybe we'll get a lot of snow. Maybe we'll just see flurries. But I know from times in the past, particularly some really bad winters that we had back in the 1980s and 90s, that was a very challenging time to live in Western Maryland. And I thought it was really funny. The area where my parents live, a guy moved in next door to them back in the mid-1970s. He was from the town where they live originally, and he had left many, many, many years before and moved to upstate New York where he was a college professor and he taught for years. And then he decided when he retired that he wanted to come back and live in the town that he was from here in Maryland. And he came back, actually moved next door to where my parents live. And it was in 1977. It was one of the worst winters that we ever had here. And he actually only stayed here for one year and he moved back to upstate New York. He said, the winters are actually better up there. And I thought that was really funny. Now, like I said, we haven't had a lot of severe winter weather for quite a while now, but when you live in Western Maryland, particularly where I do in kind of a mountainous area, you have to get used to the whole idea of driving in snow and ice. And it can be really frustrating sometimes to try to drive if you have a deep snow You might get a foot of snow on the ground, and maybe the road crews plow it. Maybe they put chemicals down, and you get some melting. But what can happen sometimes is then you'll have a plummet of temperature, and the next thing you know, that snow is crusted over with ice. And what can end up happening is if you're driving sometimes, you can literally find yourself in a rut. And this can happen sometimes if you're one of the first cars venturing out before they've really had a chance to plow. There may have only been one or two vehicles going in front of you, and you find yourself basically driving in somebody else's tire tracks. Well, if that was a little bit earlier on that they drove through and the temperature has dropped and it's beginning to freeze, you can literally find yourself locked in somebody else's rut. You want very much to turn right or left, but wherever they went, you are going to go. And it's a really weird feeling. And you have to kind of get used to driving in that kind of a circumstance. I live in a small town that's right at the edge of the mountains, and you literally can't enter or exit our town without driving up or down incredibly steep hills. So if there's snow or ice on the road, it's really a challenge. And you really only have two choices. You can stay at home and wait until it melts or they plow the roads, or you can venture out and just make the best of it. But you do have to contend with what is on the surface of the road. So what in the world does this have to do with 2021? Well, it really does, in that perspective of business, center around the idea of what ruts are you driving in as you come into 2021? No matter what your business is, no matter what organization or company you're a part of, we all drive in ruts. Maybe it's ruts that were forged last year. Maybe they were forged over the last five years. Sometimes we repetitively do things year after year from the mindset of, well, this is the policy. This is the procedure. This is how we do things. And that may be fine, but it may not be fine too. And sometimes what you might discover is that you're rounding out another year doing the same tired old things the same way, and you might have a little bit of success. You might make some money. You might meet budget. You might accomplish on a very cursory level whatever you're about in your business, but are you growing? Are you really developing? Are you reaching into new territory? If you're not, It could be because you're driving in ruts. It could be that you're locked into that same old way of doing things. And it can be a very hard mindset to shake. 
Now, I think in 2020, because there were so many challenges that were thrust onto people in the midst of that year, so many people in business settings had to make massive adjustments on the fly. We didn't have the luxury of casually entering into things. Businesses that had never operated remotely before suddenly had to. Many of us learned the nuances of video conferencing. And it was really a situation of we had to just digest a lot of information in a short time, learn how to do things. At the time, many of us might have felt like it was just a grudging necessity. But we also, in many instances, for those of us who kind of looked at the bigger picture, suddenly realized there was a hidden advantage here because we were learning how to do things that we probably never would have otherwise. We didn't ask for the circumstances that we found ourselves in, but we realized that for the sake of our organizations, we had to learn how to operate differently. And instead of it just being something that we put up with, we embraced it and we allowed it to shape decisions of how we would move forward. And so coming into 2021, we've actually integrated many of those facets of what we had to learn in 2020 into our daily business practices. It's actually helped us to grow. It's given us the ability to look beyond the constraints of what we did before. And that's what I wanna challenge you to do in 2021 in whatever your sphere is. The ruts are there. You may have been following in the same ruts for years. They may be ruts that are based on a track that you created in the snow a long time ago. Or maybe you're following somebody else's example. Maybe your organization or business is doing something that it was taught or that it observed from some other organization. But again, that might have been years ago. And we need to keep fresh. We need to keep new and current and relevant. We need to have a very contemporary perspective on the efficiency of what we do, on the legitimacy of the time, effort, energy, and finances that we invest in doing whatever our business is. So I really want to suggest to you, if you haven't ever thought in those terms, think about it that way. And if there are things that you feel you need to do in your business as you move into 2021, the other aspect that I want to really help solidify in your mind right now is that you can't have a foot in both worlds. You can't move forward doing things in a new way and somehow be dragging your other foot in the past. If you try to do that, you'll just fall down. There's no way to juggle that. It literally is a mutually exclusive either or situation. And so if there's something that you're deciding to branch out into, maybe that you never tackled before, it might not be easy to do. You may understand only 60% of what you need to to make it happen, but don't wait to learn 100% of what you need to because that will only happen as you're doing whatever it is that you want to do. There's a huge benefit of experiential data, things that you will just observe as you maneuver through whatever you're attempting, and you will make mistakes. You won't do everything perfectly, but if you have the right mindset, if you purpose to not get defeated, to not get down on yourself, to not simply throw your hands up and say, well, that didn't work, it can be a gold mine of information for you because you can learn, oh, I see why that didn't work. And that can become very beneficial as you hone the processes, as you really redefine the direction that you're moving in. There will always be more to learn. Learn enough so that you're not just bumbling around in the dark, but don't wait to try to have every little detail figured out. Find a happy medium and then purpose, I'm going to move forward. Now, things may really blow up in your face. That does happen sometimes. You may try something and really see a couple of months down the road that, you know what, for my business, for my organization, this just is not a good fit. But you have to really give it a good shot. You can't simply be two days in and say, well, this is too much work. Well, I didn't know that was going to happen. Well, nobody told me about this because those unforeseen things will be there. Don't be blindsided by them. Expect them to be there. But purpose that once you decide to move forward, you will do just that, move forward. So in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, the prophet Elijah has just gone through an experience where he had this deep zeal to be in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord allowed him to experience him passing by. 
And immediately after that experience, the Lord gives some instructions to Elijah. And in the middle of those instructions, he tells him to anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, to succeed him as prophet. So here's Elijah the prophet, and he just experienced the presence of the Lord. And now the Lord is saying, I want you to anoint Elisha to succeed you. So it says in verse 19, so Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his servant. Well, of course, the spiritual significance here is that Elijah was passing his prophetic mantle to Elisha. But we see in that moment the whole idea that Elisha didn't get into a big argument with him. He didn't say, well, who are you? It bore witness with him. He recognized, okay, yeah, what Elijah is telling me, uh, this is true. I, I can sense this is what God is telling me to do. So from Elisha's perspective, he knew I need to move forward into what Elijah is telling me. So what did he do? Well, right in the moment of going along with the yoke of oxen, he's confronted with, nah, you need to move in a completely different direction. Well, he purposed in his heart that, yeah, you know what? That's right. I do. He embraced it. He could have argued it. He could have run from it. He could have done anything, but he said, yeah, that's what I'll do. So when he went back to say goodbye, he truly did say goodbye because he actually took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. And it says he burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. And then he went back and joined Elijah to follow him and be a servant. Well, what I think is really telling there is that Elisha didn't just simply say, yeah, okay, I'll come with you. He actually burned his plow. He slaughtered his oxen. And so he essentially destroyed the ability to go back. He destroyed the ability to have his same livelihood, to go about business as usual, to be in the rut. He created a scenario where he said, you know, I do believe I'm supposed to move in this new direction. And so I want to be very demonstrative in that. Now, what I find interesting is he didn't just go back and destroy the yoke of oxen and destroy the plow and just let wreckage and ruin. He slaughtered the oxen and roasted them on a fire made from the destroyed plow, and he fed the people. And what I think that speaks to us is when we decide to move forward in our businesses, in whatever way, it can be a huge investment. Maybe we're buying new software. Maybe we're branching out and opening up a new office or we're moving into a different geographical area. Or it can be something very, very simple. Maybe we're hiring one new staff member. Maybe we're changing our days of operation, whatever it is. When we decide to move into that, we have to be willing to step outside of the rut of the way we did things before. And we don't want to simply step away from it. We want to make sure that there is no turning back. And so, well, what does that translate into? It can mean many different things for us, but I think it's very telling here that Elisha didn't simply create devastation and destruction when he decided to move away from his old life. He actually did it in a way that blessed others. He burned the plow, he cooked the meat over the fire, and he fed the people. We need to feed other people. And on whatever level, whatever we've done up to this point, if we've decided, you know what, this no longer is serving my purposes, there is still something that we've learned, there's something that we've accomplished, there's something that we have in our possession that somebody else can benefit from. Because if we're on a journey of A to Z, Maybe we're moving from D to E, and as we move into E, there's somebody way back in C that would love to have what we had in D. 
So instead of just throwing it by the wayside, let's give it to somebody who can benefit from us. And that can happen in a lot of ways. That could be a scenario where maybe you have equipment or materials that you no longer will be using as your business moves in a different direction. And maybe you can sell something and make a profit off of it. Or maybe you can donate it to someone. Maybe you can provide opportunities to give some of that knowledge base that you have to someone else so that they don't have to struggle. Instead of it taking another organization 10 years to accomplish what you have, maybe they can do it in half the time because you have practical experience to give to them. And that's what I want to leave with you just as food for thought for 2021. If you are moving in different directions, be willing to utilize that and and have that mindset that, okay, whatever I did before, I can give to someone else. I can allow somebody else to benefit from my experience. And I have to be purposeful to move forward and to not go back myself. You know, Jesus said that. He said, whoever puts his hand to the plow and looks back isn't fit for service in the kingdom of God. So we have to be really intentional about always looking forward. And even if it's not easy, even if it seems overwhelming, our real future is in the future. It's never in the past. So don't try to go back. Don't try to stay there. And don't be afraid, even if it does take extra effort, to climb up out of those ruts and, in the best possible ways, to burn your plow. As we move into 2021, we want to be sharing much more with you. Valor Media is designed to provide you with strategies to thrive in business and also in your own personal life. To really help you focus on that mindset at the beginning of this new year, I'd like to suggest that you seek out a book that was recently published by our executive director, Lori Riston. It's available on Amazon.com, and it's called You Were Made to Thrive, Seven Strategies to Move You from Crisis to Thriving. That's really what the Valor Media Podcast is all about, and I invite you to come back and join us each week in both our Crisis to Thriving series and our Valor XL series as we take a look at the most practical ways to embrace that abundant life that Jesus said he came that we might have. I encourage you to learn more about the mission of Valor Ministries. You can visit us on Facebook at Valor Ministries and Valor XL and on our websites www.thevalorcenter.org and www.valorxl.com. If you have suggestions for something you would like us to cover in future installments of the Valor Media Podcast, we really want to encourage you to provide feedback to us because we want this to be content that's valid and relevant for you. You can share ideas or questions with us at media at thevalorcenter.org. And if you need prayer, if you'd like to learn more about what a relationship with Jesus Christ is all about, please reach out to us at info at thevalorcenter.org and someone from the Valor Ministries team will get back in touch with you. So that we can bring content like this to you week after week, would you consider financially supporting Valor Ministries? If so, you can make your generous tax-deductible donations securely online by going to www.thevalorcenter.org slash donate Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. Please subscribe to or follow this podcast and join us here each week as we do everything we can to try to give you inspiration and move forward in your personal life, in your business life, to be everything God created you to be. Join us next week when your host will be Lori Riston. And until then, remember this, for 2021 and beyond, you were made to thrive.